Hi YouTube, how are you doing? And welcome back to Phasmophobia. This video is going to be the ultimate guide to the cursed possessions of Phasmophobia. I realized recently that I had somehow never made this video before, even though in my opinion, the cursed possessions are the most important item you need to learn how to use in this game. If you know how to use the cursed possessions, you will make every single one of your contracts so much easier. But if you don't know how to use them, you can get yourself killed instantly in so many situations. So in this video, we're going to go over each and every one of the cursed possessions talking in extreme detail about everything you can do with them and all the little things I've learned in my over a thousand hours of playing with the cursed possessions. Now, as you can see, this video is extremely long, but that's because there's just so many things you can do with these items that you might not even know. So I can assure you that even the most veteran players are going to learn a ton of stuff from this video. And if you're just interested in a specific cursed possession, uh, you can hop around with the timestamps down below. Or if you're just interested in a really quick summary you can just skip right to the end where i will do just that but anyway i hope you enjoy if you're not subscribed please do so if you like the video like it if you dislike it dislike it but let's not waste any more time and let's hop into the game let's go Alrighty, well, the first item I want to talk about is the simplest curse possession. We're going to talk about each and every one of them. I'll do them probably in order of complexion. So we'll deal with like the monkey paw and all the crazy stuff a little bit later. So we can start with the simple items that make uh, or that are immediately easy to understand. I think the mirror, uh, I'll grab it right here. It's in, uh, by the way, the way you find the cursed possessions in this game, I'll have all of them. You're not going to have all of them when you're playing normally. You're only going to have one of them, which there will be randomly around the map. However, the position that they will be in is fixed. Like if the mirror, if you have the mirror, it will always be on this wall in Tanglewood. If you have it on Ridgeview, it will always be on the wall next to the dining. Like they're always in the same spot. It'll just take a little bit to learn. They're really in obvious spots. You just walk around. I think the hardest to find are usually the monkey paw, which can be in dressers. I'll show you around. I'll show you some of these a uh, little bit more complicated locations. But anyway, this one is this video is mostly about what you can do with them. The mirror is very, very simple. What can you do with the mirror? There's basically two things. You can pull up the mirror and it'll show you the ghost room. Boom. It shows you the ghost room in this case is the garage, the garage room right here. And that's all it does. It does not, very important distinction, it does not show you the ghost location. It shows you the ghost room, which in my opinion is way more useful. This means that if you're dealing with a Gorio or something, or you think it might be a Gorio, you can pull up the mirror a few times throughout the match. And if you ever see a different room on the mirror, you know 100% certain that the ghost has changed favorite room, which the Gorio can never do. So you can immediately rule out Gorio. Now, uh, every cursed possession, this is going to be a theme throughout all of them while we're talking about them. Uh, they give you something, but they also take something away. Now, this something away can be random or in this case can be completely fixed away. Uh, what you're giving up by using the mirror is your sanity, which your sanity is basically the cost for. It's like a currency you use. Uh, to spend on the cursed possessions, basically. That's a way you can think about them. Alrighty, into from the future here with a little bit of a better explanation of how the sanity drain works. Just I was having some trouble on stream explaining it. Basically, it's very simple. You pull up the mirror to see the ghost room. It starts draining your sanity by 7.5% per second however if you pull it down really quickly uh it will still drain your sanity by at least a minimum of 20. if you held it up for so long that the seven and a half per second was higher than 20 you'll lose that amount so you'll lose more than 20. if you instead pulled it down before like three seconds were over because three seconds of seven and a half per second is right around 20 then you'll just lose 20 instead uh and the way this is by this is this way because previously you could pull up the the mirror and pull it down immediately only use a tiny bit of sanity like seven percent and still get all the information out of the mirror you could still see the ghost room so it was really 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 powerful so they just added this minimum sanity drain to it so it became a little bit more punishing to use it for a short time and it also incentivizes the player to look a little bit longer so instead of like pulling it up and then immediately pulling it down you are incentivized to look for like three seconds oh i know this room i know what it is but anyway let's hop back into the main video so i can explain a little more about all the other items okay so that's the the mirror uh it's actually one of my favorite curse possessions in the game it shows you the ghost room immediately uh it can work every time throughout the match to like uh, if you if you lose the ghost for whatever reason you're dealing with a crazy roaming ghost you can just pull up the mirror again see where it is and boom you found it again it's amazing i love it uh and the other thing it can do which i guess i will show you if you run out of sanity 
with any curse possession basically that's like a kind of a rule with them they will break and they will start a cursed hunt so in this scenario if i just use it over and over again eventually i think by now if i pull it up oh god i'm gonna die ah is it a deal wait i'm actually gonna die this was not oh no i'm gonna die it's a deal <laughs> wait i can't live this no <laughs> That is actually so fucked up. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the slow fucking death. I wasn't expecting a Dio right there. But anyway, if you pull up the mirror when you have no sanity, it'll trigger a hunt right there and it will um, it will just be a regular hunt. Now, what's important to know about the curse possessions is that every time you break one of the curse possession, you start something called cursed hunts. From that point onwards, every hunt it's gonna be harder. How are they harder? They will be 20 seconds longer than a normal hunt, and they will also have a grace period of exactly one second. So if you're playing on professional where usually you have three seconds grace period, this will instead now be one second, which can be a huge difference. That's something you really have to take into consideration. Is it worth breaking this curse possession and triggering a hunt, which might be very useful? Right there, if I didn't die like an idiot, I would have been able to immediately figure out, boom, that's a Diogen, we don't have to like figure out any of the evidence. Hunts are extremely powerful in this game, which makes the curse possessions extremely powerful because obviously hunts are the way you die, but they're also the way you can figure out ghosts really fast. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll explain, I'll like summarize some of these things uh, along the way as well. Anyway, we're going back in, that was stupid. Uh, so yeah, mirror, very simple. Use it, it takes some sanity, shows you the ghost room. If you break it, it'll start a hunt, that's all. And if you break it, it's gone forever. You can't use it again, so you need to be careful with that. Don't break it too early. Uh, we're gonna move on to the next curse possession, which I think, in my opinion, is the best in the entire game. Uh, the voodoo doll, now, maybe not the best, but it is the most useful for regular gameplay. The voodoo doll is amazing. It's extremely simple, but the thing it does, it does in a really powerful way. If I, you can see the voodoo doll right here, by the way, it's amazingly floppy. They brought that back. It was bugged for a while. Uh, it has 10 pins. Every time I right click, it will use one of those pins and it will force an interaction out of the ghost. The ghost will just throw whatever's close by. Maybe it'll turn on a light, turn off a light, uh, touch a door, etc., etc. You can also get writing this way. You used to be able to get dots this way, but you can't do that anymore from my experience. I did a bunch of runs to test this and I couldn't get any dots, even if it was a dots ghost. So it seems like they've taken that away with the new dot system. However, one of these pins, one of the 10 pins is in the heart. The heart pin, will trigger a hunt. So this one is different from the mirror, where the mirror, the only way you can cause a hunt is by breaking it when you use when you use it when you have too low sanity. With this one, there's actually a random chance every time you use it that you'll pull the heart pin, which will trigger a hunt. Now, every time you pull a pin, this will take 5% sanity. That's basically the cost, which this used to be 10% sanity, but luckily they, they buffed it and it's now only 5% sanity. Unless it's the heart pin, which will take 10% sanity. That's it. Uh, and what makes this item so useful, especially in high level gameplay, if you have the tier three crucifix, is that sometimes you're just dealing with that shitty ghost that doesn't want to give you writing, doesn't want to give you EM5, it doesn't want to do anything, it doesn't want to touch a door. Uh, so you're just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. In those situations, being able to just force something out of the shade that you're dealing with is extremely useful and it and it can speed up your games a ton. And especially if you have the tier three crucifix, the tier three crucifix is special because it can actually stop the hunt that can happen if you pull the heart pin. Same thing with the mirror, by the way, if you pull up the mirror and it breaks, you can stop that hunt with the, with the tier three crucifix as well. Uh, so we're gonna put that, I think this is the ghost room. Let's quickly use the mirror to find what the exact ghost room is. It is in fact that room, there we go. Look how powerful that is. Uh, which by the way, you can hold it up for basically three seconds before you start draining additional sanity. So, oh, come on, it's a fucking Yure, you piece of shit. <laughs> uh, anyway, whatever, we know what ghost it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, what it just, I love how when I try to do these guides, the ghosts always do stupid shit, it's actually incredible. So, 
to quickly give you a side tour of what happened right there the ghost touched this door twice closed it completely which is like the special thing that yurei does but anyway let's say that we still want to get more information out of this ghost what we can do is place like a writing book or just throw a bunch of items in here we can literally just grab a bunch of items throw them in the ghost room um because it'll force an interaction out of the ghost. However, that does this does require that there is something nearby that the ghost can interact with. Because if you're dealing with a completely empty room that doesn't have anything in there, you can pull as many pins as you want. It won't trigger anything because the ghost can't interact with something. So right now we'll pull the thing and it throws the it throws the plate. You pull another one throws the plate again super simple but super powerful because if you have emf right here you have writing book right here you're just spamming constant interaction out of the ghost which is just can also be a phone it can be a light switch it can be literally everything sometimes you'll be like oh is this maybe a mare and then you use the voodoo doll it turns on a light by forcing an interaction boom you know it's not a mare because it turned on a light i just really enjoy this thing because it just makes the game like it just gives you so much power over what the ghost does. And it used to be that it was super risky to use the voodoo doll, as you can imagine, because at any point, there's a random chance that the next pin you pull is that heart pin, which will immediately trigger a hunt. However, with the tier three crucifix, if I get the heart pin, let's pull until I get it, it'll just stop the hunt. It won't happen. And it'll eat the crucifix instead, which is this this the, the existence of the tier three crucifix has made cursed possessions like the voodoo doll so much more useful because i i would basically never use the voodoo doll in this way like so aggressively because it was super punishing uh however with the new tier three crucifixes this, this is not a problem at all now you might not have those but that's just for something for later anyway uh another way so th it, that's literally all it does you pull a pin it does an interaction you pull the hard pin it does a hunt there's another thing if you use the uh voodoo doll when you have zero sanity, it'll basically do the same thing as the mirror, where it'll break the cursed possession, which in this case is pulling in all the pins so you can't use it anymore, and then it'll also trigger a hunt. So if I were, uh, let's quickly see, give me one second. I set my sanity up so it's low. Okay, look at that. So we are now at 5% sanity, basically. So if we're gonna use the voodoo doll now, something bad's gonna happen. I'm going to quickly put this, I'm just, I'm gonna put this on the ghost, and then we're gonna use the voodoo doll. Now, hopefully it's not gonna use it right away. Let's see. So as you can see, there's still a few pins that are pulled up, but as soon as I click this, wait, one more time. You saw how it pulled in all of the pins there. It pulled in like three pins all at once. So now if I try to right click, it doesn't do anything anymore. The voodoo doll is used up and it triggered a hunt. However, because I have the tier three crucifix, that hunt was stopped. So yeah, if you uh, don't have any sanity, which is basically a theme throughout all cursed possessions, if you use them at 0% sanity, let's say I use this one at 0% sanity, which by the way, I'm gonna die so many times during this guide because I'm just gonna be completely stupid. Uh, let me just turn on these lights so I don't die. Um, if I use this one, it'll immediately break and trigger. Oh my God. <laughs> trigger a hunt as well. Please don't kill me. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna talk about the music box more. This wasn't everything I wanna say about the music box, but just to showcase. Like basically every curse possession, there's a few exceptions. The monkey paw, the tarot cards are exceptions to this rule. Um, but the other ones, if you try to use them, I think all of the other ones, if you try and use them, except the summoning circle as well, because the summoning circle is terrible now, but I'll have a lot to say about that when we get to that cursed possession. Anyway, could you please stop hunting now? Okay, there we go, hunt's over. I'll grab this bone, get the hell out of here. Uh, this is obviously your, I want my sanity back so I can show you, and I want my, my tier three crucifix back so I can show you more. Yeah, it could be a mimic, but... That would be really rude. There you go. It was a URA. Uh, now, because I have all the cursed possessions, I have a zero reward, but that's not why we're here. We're here to explain stuff. So let's get back in. Okay, so that's everything about the summoning or about the voodoo doll and the mirror. They're simple cursed possessions, but really, really useful in my opinion because they just help you with the general gameplay. Um, another very simple cursed possession is the music box. It is extremely simple. Um, the way it works, I'll show you right here at the very beginning of a mission, which is kind of stupid. You shouldn't do that. Uh, if I like right hold it like this, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything. If I walk outside, it closes. That means you can't use it anymore. Which, by the way, every cursed possession cannot be used outside of the map. You can only use them inside the map. So you can't have your friend use the voodoo doll in the truck to troll you or something like that. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, the one thing you can do is break the Ouija board outside of the map, but whatever. We'll talk about that when we get there. Um, 
If I want to use the music box, I can right click. It'll start, Jesus Christ, that's so loud. It'll start, is it supposed to be that loud? Uh, it'll start playing this song and it'll ma start making the ghost sing. Uh, I'll go, Jesus Christ. This, I feel like I got a bugged version of the music box. That is super loud. So it'll make the ghost sing. Um, wait, what? Oh, it's in the basement now? It's just standing here. Uh, so it's standing here and it's singing. Sorry, I was just so overwhelmed by that sound being like, I think, I think it bugged out or something. I don't know what that happened there. Uh, but it'll make the ghost sing, uh, which is a great way to find the ghost room. Uh, now another thing the music box can do is trigger a cursed or trigger a ghost event and then a hunt after that However, the very unique thing about the music box is that you can only use it once now. It's dead I can't use it anymore. I have to restart the game to be able to use it again So we're quickly gonna restart so I can show you like how you trigger a hunt with this thing Okay, so let's see uh, what's very important when using the music box is that you don't use it too close to the ghost because it can lead to some really hilarious deaths right away uh because as you i'll, I'll use it right here uh, see that's way more nice so it'll make the ghost sing you can find it it's right here singing uh that's how you can find the ghost room or you can like walk with the music box towards the ghost it'll then do wait what hello okay <laughs> Um, that's another thing you're gonna find out with the music box is that it is one of the buggiest cursed possessions out of all of them. That was completely not what's supposed to happen with the music box, which you're always gonna, you're, that's always gonna happen when I try to do a guide is that the, that the music box bugs out. What's, what's supposed to happen there instead, which, uh, I, let me just quickly show you what's supposed to happen because that was stupid. Okay, so let's hope this time the ghost actually works with us here. So we're gonna use it. Oh, it's right there. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, there we go. So it does a ghost event. It walks towards the music box. And then after a little bit, it'll start a hunt. That's what it's supposed to do. It'll... Wait, what the fuck is happening? Um, oh, God. Uh, so this is a way you can take the ghost photo. You can get a ghost event for the ghost event objective. You can get a hunt to uh, get like a repel the ghost objective or figure out what ghost you're dealing with, etc., etc. Um, but... So that's useful. It's useful to be able to trigger a hunt, but that's like basically all it does. It also gives you obviously the opportunity to take a ghost photo, which is pretty powerful. Um, but it is one of those, it's one of the weaker cursed possessions in my opinion, because it kind of just like triggers a hunt, that's it. The only thing that it has going for it is that you can take the ghost photo, which with the ghosts nowadays, they're usually super crazy. So you're gonna be able to take a ghost photo like all the time anyway. Um, the, the cost of the music box, what does it cost to use it? If you are playing the music, so if you turn it on, while the music is playing, every second you're losing sanity. Oh my God, what the fuck is going on, brother? Um, so after using it for however long we used it right there, let's see how much sanity we have. It doesn't take away all your sanity, like the summoning circle. Yeah, see, we we only listened to the music for a little bit, so it only de drained around actually only 20% basically, because 10% is from that ghost event that just happened. Um, I Let me quickly look up how much it is exactly. Okay, so we just quickly did a test. This is after using it for exactly three seconds long. So it seems like it drains around two and a half uh, sanity per second. That's what people are saying. But it only drains this sanity if you are close to the music box. So a thing that I like to do sometimes if I don't want to drain my sanity is start the music, place it somewhere, and then go run around the building, which this only really works on small maps because the ghost only sings when it's close enough to the music box. So if you're using this on a big map, the music box, in my opinion, is one of the worst cursed possessions on a big map because uh, you can't really like use it for one of its main use cases, which is finding the ghost room. Um, but if you use it on a small map, you just turn it on, place it on the ground, run away from it so you don't lose any sanity, and then you just listen for the singing, boom, you found the ghost room. It's extremely powerful in that uh, now there's a few other things that you can do with or that can happen with the music box if you are using it make sure to place it on the ground using f 
and not throw it on the ground using G because if you start playing the music and then you throw it out of your hands or you rotate your equipment, which will automatically drop it out of your hands. If you do that and it falls instead of placing it, it'll immediately trigger a hunt no matter where the ghost is. So you need to be really careful. Don't drop it, uh, don't throw it because I mean, unless you want to do that, which is valid, like just knowing that, knowing that uh, it will trigger a hunt is important. If you want to trigger a hunt, more power to you, do it that way, that's totally fine. Uh, but you just got to keep that in mind that if you don't want to cause a hunt, place it on the ground and then go look for the ghost wherever it's singing from. That's basically all it does. It uh, triggers a ghost event, ghost walks towards the music box. Once the music box is close enough to the ghost, um, it'll stand on it for a while and then it'll trigger a hunt. Now, as you also saw right there, I'm glad it actually happened during this, is that the music box is incredibly buggy. There's just like so many bugs where uh, you'll use it, the music will start playing, the ghost will start singing, you walk toward the ghost, and for whatever reason, the ghost just doesn't do the ghost event part of the music box, and instead it'll like instantly trigger a hunt randomly out of nowhere, kill you instantly, and you'll just feel completely robbed because you were robbed. That is not how the music box is supposed to work. Uh, it's especially annoying on maps like Willow Street House and sometimes on Edgefield and the like basically if a map has a basement it gets really confused I don't know I don't know the exact specifics of why it bugs out so often but it's just a, it's just a bit of a an iffy item here and there it's in my opinion maybe the weakest curse possession in the game uh together with probably the summoning circle which speaking of the summoning circle let's continue talking about the summoning circle which oh boy look what they did to my boy uh, they have completely ma the developers for some reason uh, Have this idea in their mind that the summoning circle is the best curse position in the game I don't know why they think this I think they think it because you can use it to get a lot of objectives Which is fair you can do you can get the uh, Like uh, oh, there's no salt objective anymore, but you can get EMF you can get motion sensor You can use it to like get a ton of objectives. However um, it they have made it so bad now that it is almost unusable. The way the uh, summoning circle works, it's down here. Um, there's five candles. If you light all five candles, it'll trigger a ghost event in the middle of the summoning circle. So you can take a photo. Uh, if you have a motion sensor right here, it'll trigger the motion sensor. If you have salt underneath here, it'll step in the salt, which that's actually a great trick, by the way. Um, you can place nine, I, let's just do that or uh, I'll show you that real quick, one sec. Okay, so we have all the salt here. You can literally just place nine piles of salt under the <laughs> feet of the ghost. And then if you trigger this, which we will do in a moment here, it'll step in that salt and that allows you to then take nine photos instantly of tier or three star salt photos, which that is a thing that I'm glad they did now because that like having so much salt uh, and uh, like they've made the perfect reward, the perfect game bonus so much higher now that that is an incredible thing. Uh, that, that, that's actually like the buff the summoning circle needed for a while. But anyway, why do I think the summoning circle is very bad? Because the way it works now, um, or yeah, let me just explain how it works. If you light a candle, uh, it'll turn on, obviously. But when I light this candle, it'll drain my sanity by 16%. So if I go back to the truck now, which one second, as you can see right here, my sanity is basically 20% lower. That's because we were standing in the dark a little bit. So yeah, it drains your sanity by 16%. Now, what happens if I don't have enough sanity? Give me one sec. Okay, so now we're at 20% sanity. If we go back there and we light two candles, this ghost is a, a little excited. Hello there, buddy. Could you please stop singing? I'm gonna give you a crucifix so you don't kill me because I'm pretty low sanity right now. Uh, here, take that. Uh, anyway, so now we're even lower. Now we probably can't even light one candle. What happens if you wanna use the, the summoning circle when you have not enough sanity? Um, too bad, you're fucked. If I light this candle, it'll just turn off. If I light it again, It'll turn off. It'll turn off. There is nothing I can do to use the summoning circle at this point. It is dead. It is a useless curse possession. There is nothing I can do to use it at this point besides eating all of the sanity pills if you have them to get my sanity back up high enough so I can actually use it again, which this I think makes the summoning circle one of the worst 
cursed possessions in the game right now because it is the only cursed possession that you simply cannot use anymore if you don't have enough sanity for it, which I think is really stupid. I would at least want there to be like a hunt that happens. Like maybe it doesn't give you the ghost event, but it still triggers a hunt right here. Cause right now, uh, by the way, little trick, which people obviously are going to tell me about. If you have only two candles, like let's say these were both lit. If there's only two candles left, you can really quickly light both of these at the same time. Uh, before this one goes out, you can light the next one and it'll still trigger the hunt. Oh God, I'm going to die. It'll still trigger the hunt, but it won't do the summoning circle thing. So anyway, uh, that's... I have no tips for that. If you, Jesus Christ, this ghost is insane. Um... If you have, fuck. If you have no sanity, too bad. You cannot use the summoning circle because every candle takes 16% sanity. You basically need uh, like 80, uh, like 80 percent sanity to be able to use the summoning circle in the first place, which is uh, like pretty damn punishing. But anyway, let's say that we do have enough sanity by virtue of taking literally every single one of the pills just there. Uh, what happens if we decide to light the summoning circle? It's very simple. It's kind of similar to the music box. If I light it, it'll start a ghost event and I can take a ghost photo and then run away because it's gonna start its hunt from there. Um, oh God, is it fast? Yo, it's a deal again. <laughs> okay. Anyway, these ghosts are fucking silly, dude. <laughs> okay. Uh, so it'll start. It'll start a, uh, a ghost event, and then afterwards it'll trigger a hunt. In this case, we're dealing with another damn Dio. So this is a, a silly ghost. Um, would you please be quiet, sir? Uh, if you're used, if you never use the curse possessions, you're gonna see right here just how much longer these hunts are. Uh, especially on small maps, using the curse possession early in the game and triggering a hunt with it can be a terrible idea because the hunts after that will be almost twice as long. A regular hunt on uh, professional difficulty, I can show you right here. If I run out outside really quick, I can show you on the chart. Uh, a regular hunt on, I think, nightmare mode difficulty will last 30 seconds. It will last 30 seconds long, but if you use the cursed positioning, you trigger cursed hunts. From that point onwards, every hunt will be an additional 20 seconds. So instead of 30 seconds, you're dealing with 50 second long hunts, almost twice as long, which um, if you're not in a great hiding spot, this can increase the chance of the ghost randomly stumbling upon where you're hiding twice as high. So there's a pretty, pretty big punishment and this will never go away. Once you've triggered cursed hunts, it'll never stop. There's no way you can uh, get rid of it. And another thing, if you are using the, um, the tier three crucifix to stop the hunt from happening, it won't stop the cursed hunts from happening. If I, let's say I placed the tier three crucifix on top of the summoning circle right there, it would have stopped the hunt, but the next hunt that would have happened after that would have still been a cursed hunt. It would have had one second grace period. It would have been 20 seconds longer. So keep that in mind. Even if you stop them, they'll still be, um, they'll still make the game way harder after that. So uh, that's literally, not, now that we got that, by the way, now that we had the summoning circle happen and we had it step in the salt, you can do this insane thing. Because we had it uh, step in nine pieces of salt, we can literally just sit right here and take nine photos, one after another, <laughs> and fill up the entire book using, oh God, the ghost is hunting. This is gonna be a bit of a tricky situation. Hello, buddy. Uh, I'm going to loop around you, hopefully not die. Thank you very much. Um, you please chill. I want to just show these people what's going on here. All right, we're going to try something real stupid. I'll, t I'll talk more about the monkey paw later, but I just want this game to be over. Uh, so I'm going to run. And then, oh no, I have the... Fuck. I don't know if this is going to work. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. I wish to leave. I wish to leave. I wish to leave. Can I please leave? I'm fucking stuck at the wall. Okay, well that did not work. <laughs> I forgot I changed my fucking voice recognition to text to speech before this game. Oh no. All right, that was not my uh, 
Not my brightest move. I forgot that I changed my voice recognition, which by the way is amazing. I'll talk more about that later. There's just so much to talk about. All right. Anyway, we had another Dio. Uh, let's hop back in so we can talk more. <laughs> Stupid. I left this mortal realm. Yeah, that's not what I meant though when I said I wish to leave. All right. Anyway, um, so Diogen memes aside, uh, that's basically all the summoning circle does. You light a candle, it drains 60% sanity. If you have enough sanity to light all of them, it'll start a it'll start a ghost event, which after that you'll get a hunt. Uh, if you are playing single player, you can just take all the pills. Like when you are finished playing the game and you have enough evidence that you want to trigger hunts, you can uh, just eat all of the sanity pills, light all the candles, and trigger a cursed hunt. If you're working in a team, you can actually uh work together to light the summoning circle so basically everyone that's close to the candles when they are lit will lose 60 percent sanity so if you have one person walk forward to the summoning circle light as many candles as they can until they run out of sanity then you have that person walk away another person comes in with a can with a lighter and lights the rest of the candles you can basically use the whole team sanity to light all the candles and then trigger the summoning circle that way. So uh, when you're doing that, just make sure that you're not all stacked on top of the summoning circle. Because if you're all close to the summoning circle, when one person lights one candle, everyone will lose 16% sanity. So if you want to do it that way, and just in general, a good tip is to, to be away from the summoning circle when it's being lit. So you don't also lose your sanity. That's basically all there is to say about the summoning circle. Let's move on to the next one, which... Um, I think, is there any more? Let's, let's do the, the the Ouija board first, because the Ouija board is still complicated, but one of the simpler ones. I think the tarot cards and the monkey paw are where it gets really, really uh, convoluted and confusing. So let's grab the uh, Ouija board. This thing is actually the first ever cursed possession that was in the game. From the very beginning that the game was out, we already had an Ouija board. And later, actually like almost two years later, uh, what was it? It was pretty much two years later. They added all of the other cursed possessions, which we now know and love. Um, the Ouija board is fairly simple if you know what you're doing. But if you don't know what you're doing, I see a lot of people that are new and that have no idea what questions to ask the board be super confusing with how to use it. Um, if you click on it, it'll put this thing down. It'll put down the planchette and now you can start asking questions. What's really important is that if you're done asking questions or you don't want to ask it a question is that you say goodbye. If you don't say goodbye and you walk away from the uh from the ouija board the following will happen it'll light up on fire ah fuck ah fuck it'll light on fire break the board it's a slow ghost probably hantu or rev or the twins um and that's it you can't use it anymore can you come over here ghost by the way hello hello i want to quickly test if you're a ha you're probably uh are you the twins or a hantu Let's see if it gets any faster. It is getting faster, so it is the twins. Okay. Um, so that's it. That's just what I quickly wanted to show you. Let's leave this match. Ah! Jesus fucking Christmas. Let's leave this game and <laughs> fill in that it's the twins and then get another board because this one's broken. <laughs> Yeah, it was actually a Moroi, by the way. Sorry. So both Moroi and Twins are slow if you have low san or if you have high sanity, which in that case, I was literally at 100% sanity. So it was a Moroi instead, not the Twins. Sorry for the misinformation. Anyway, we're talking about the Ouija board. Let's get back. Okay, so we got another one. Look at that. How how fancy. Um, So make sure that if you trigger it, you just say goodbye. Goodbye. And then it's safe again. It's safe to walk away, safe to leave it here. Uh, if you turn it on and you take it out of the map, what did it, oh God. If for whatever reason your, your voice recognition doesn't want to work and you want to not break the board, you can walk outside, which will then automatically uh, make the, the thing go up. Now, what happens if I do this? I'm curious. Oh. That's a bit of a bug. That's not supposed to happen. You're not supposed to go through the door while this thing is up. So now I... Can I also ask questions? Oh, no. Huh? Wait, what? I didn't do that. It went up out of nowhere. Wait, what was that? What? What? Huh? Wait, let's see. I have no, no hands on the keyboard. Is it just going to go up eventually? 
What happened? Okay. I, I don't, anyway, this is you're not supposed to do this. Yeah, okay. Eventually, it just goes up by itself again. All right, regardless. Uh, these are some side things that aren't really important. I just want to talk about how to use this thing. Um, the main question that you'll be using a lot when using this is the following two questions. There's two questions that are really, really important with this, which are, where are you? Which will give you the ghost location, which unlike the mirror, this won't give you the ghost room. It will give you the ghost's exact location at that time. So if the ghost is roaming into a different room, it'll give you that different room's location. So that is something that, in my opinion, the mirror does way better because the mirror tells you the ghost room, and this might be wildly incorrect. There might be, you might be dealing with a wraith or something that just teleported around the map and is in a completely different area. And then the board will give you a very wrong answer. Um, and on top of that, not only is it giving you the ghost location rather than the ghost room, it'll also take 50% of your sanity when you say this wish. So one of those wishes, just a single one, will or one of those uh, questions will drain your sanity immediately down to half, which is kind of crazy. The other question that's really important, and in my opinion, better than asking where the ghost is, is where is the bone? Which is a new question that they introduced relatively recently, where it'll just give you the location of the bone, which if you're looking for that perfect game on a big map, that is the way to do it. I never look for the bone on a big map unless I have the board and I can ask uh, where's the bone? It's literally the only way I'll ever get the bone on a big map unless I just randomly stumble upon it. Now that question will also drain your sanity by 50%. So once again, if you uh, use both of these back to back, you'll actually instantly break the board because it'll take 100% of your sanity. So don't do that. Make sure to take sanity pills before you ask the bone question. If you wanna, for some reason, ask both of these questions at once. So yeah, these are the very expensive questions. Any other question? Um, which there are a lot of questions, by the way, um, will drain way less than that. How do you know what other questions? Those are the main important ones. If you just remember those, you're fine. However, you might be interested in all the type of stuff that you can do with the Ouija board. You can actually find out very easily by going into your settings and changing your voice recognition mode to text instead of uh, Windows or VOSC or none or whatever. If you change it, change it to text, and then you click on the board, it'll give you this menu, which will give you all of the possible things you can ask the board. So if you ever wanna like browse what kind of information you can get out of the ghost, this is the exact way to do it. You can ask, where are you? You can ask, where's the bone? You can ask a niche question, like, do you speak to everyone? Well, what this does is, um, you know how when you're playing on intermediate or amateur mode, it'll say in the book right here, if I quickly open the book, um, it'll say response to and then everyone or people who are alone in this case because I'm playing on a high difficulty It says we're unsure. We don't know if it responds to everyone or alone now That doesn't mean it automatically responds to everyone. No, it still has either alone or everyone Which by the way this matters for using the spirit box if you want to use the spirit box and the ghost responds to people who are alone, you have to get everyone out of the ghost room except the person who was using the spirit box, then ask the question and get a spirit box response. If there's multiple people in the ghost room, you don't get any responses. And that's basically the only thing for which this matters. It doesn't matter for activity as far as I've found. It just basically only matters for the spirit box. Um, and if you wanna know for whatever reason, which is not really important information, cause you could just, by default, you can just have everyone leave the ghost room and then use the spirit box. But if you, for whatever reason, wanted to know, you can go right here and ask, do you speak to everyone? In this case, yes. So it'll tell you that, basically. Um, that you have sanity, uh, which these are a little weird. <laughs> so they're, they're sanity wishes or sanity questions. These are ways to know how much sanity you have at that moment uh, without looking at the, the sanity chart. Why is this useful? You're playing on nightmare difficulty or above the screens are broken which means you cannot see what your sanity is so in order to figure out your sanity you either have to like have a very good internal like intuition of okay well, how much sanity have i been draining across this game or you can ask right here now these questions i have to be honest are basically completely useless it sounds useful but not only do they give a vague, like if they gave you a number of sanity, it would be useful. But let's say, let's say I asked the questions, am I insane? It says, 
maybe wow that is super useful now let me quickly see one second i was just i was looking up if it said anything about the exact ranges uh oh my god hello there ghost what are you doing um but it doesn't in the in the like wiki the phasma wiki um but basically, I think the way it works is if you are like below 20% or something like that, it'll say, yes, you are insane. If you're between 20... You fucking chill out, brother. I'm trying to talk. <laughs> if you're between like 20 and... Oh my fucking God, I'm going to lose my mind. If... If you're in the middle range, it'll say maybe you're insane. And if you're like above 60 or something, it'll say, no, you're not insane. So I think in this case, I'm like between 60 and 40 or something like that, which that is such a wide range. It's basically useless. Uh, I really want this ghost to get the hell out of here. Okay, hunts over. Get me the hell out of here. Let's see what our sanity was. Okay, so our sanity is insanely low. It's 20, and it still said maybe. Uh, now, that might have been because it did a bunch of ghost events, and that's how our sanity was drained. If we'll ask it again, we'll probably get the answer yes. Let's quickly do that. All right, anyway, the ghost is doing ghost event over there, whatever. Um, okay, so if we ask it now, uh, let's see, sanity, am I insane? It says yes, because our sanity is so low. Uh, now, we asked it when we had around 20% sanity. And look at that, it drained our sanity. Not only does this give you this really vague range of like, maybe, yes, no, it still also drains your sanity. So right there, in order to know what my sanity is, I have to ask this stupid question, get a vague answer, and also lose sanity for asking that question. This is why I literally never, ever, 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 ever use this. It is completely useless in every single sit conceivable situation i never find this useful and i've played thousands of games i've played six and a half thousand games also justin johnson of phasmo and i never find this useful so yeah um now there's another wish let me just take all the pills uh so we get back up to 100 and we have this ghost not be as annoying anymore there's another version of the sanity wish um which gives you different answers and these this different question is slightly more useful so the first one is am I insane? Which just says no, maybe, yes. Which apparently, according to the Phasma wiki, between 20 and 90%, it'll say maybe. If you're above 90, it'll say no. If you're below 20, it'll say yes. Uh, so, the, and, it, and the question, by the way, is based on your sanity after asking the wit or after asking the question. So if you ask the question, it'll drain your sanity by five, and then it'll say like, yes, you're insane, which you saw right there because we were above 20%. Then we asked the question, it said yes, because we were already below 20. Uh, this, the other wish is how sane am I? They're slightly different phrasings, but they give completely different answers. If I say how sane am I, it says, um, in this case, healthy. I think there is, let me just spam this question. Um, so it still says healthy, which now we're at 90%. I ask it again, we're at 85, it still says healthy. I ask it again, now we're at below 80, it says good. So between 80 and 100%, it says healthy. Below 80, it says good. Uh, if I keep asking it, it still says good. Uh, oh yeah, someone posted it here in chat. Between 60 and 80, it'll say good. Between 40 and 60, it'll say average. Between 20 and 40, it'll say bad. And below 20, it'll say awful. So basically, how sane am I is a 100% more useful wish uh, compared to am I insane? I don't even know why the am I insane wish exists because it gives you way less precision than the how sane am I wish. Um, or I think you can also say, how insane am I? So yeah, this is a way more useful, like, wish version. It basically gives you 20% sanity ranges. Uh, so if I just keep asking this, now it says good. And then if I ask it again, eventually it'll start saying average. There we go. Now it's just saying average, et cetera, et cetera. So in those 20% steps, it'll tell your sanity, but it still costs sanity to do that. So it's really not that useful. Although if you're gonna use the board for this purpose, Please, sir, I am trying to do my job here. Uh, if you're, oh my God. If you're gonna use the, the board for that purpose, at least use the how, um. Ow. Holy fucking shit, I'm gonna lose my mind. Diogen after Diogen after fucking Oni after Oni after. <laughs> 
Okay, anyway, um, I want to talk more about the board, but we're quickly going to have to just leave and say that this is probably an Oni and then <laughs> reset real quick. There you go. Obviously, it was an Oni. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Let's hope the second ghost is, or this new ghost is going to be a little nicer. So I'm going to be using text-to-speech now because it's way easier to explain it this way. So those are the how insane am I questions. Then you have the um, other like miscellaneous questions, which are how old are you? Which will give you the age of the ghost. Now, this is never useful. There's only one situation in which this is useful information, which is if you're dealing with a thay, which is this special ghost that starts at a young age and will slowly get older throughout the mission uh which will actually be reflected on the ouija board so if you think you might be dealing with a thay and you for whatever reason don't want to get a hunt or you're just like struggling with it you can ask how old are you and then come back after doing a little bit more investigation ask it again if the age has changed it is always instantly a thay there is no other ghost that can change its age it's not like the obviously the twins even if they were like doing some weird stuff they would also be the same age anyway so it's not like that's the thing uh literally thay is the only one that can change that and and then there's another question how did you die which is just a um the mimic can do the same thing but that's like just mimic is always an uh, like an outlier because it just turns into the thing uh which for mimic by the way important um actually i don't know if that works it probably does i assume it does i have no idea if the mimic will change the age on the ouija board uh but if the mimic turns into a thay it'll set a random age when it turns into a thay which actually if that age sticks around after it turns back into a different ghost that could actually be an amazing way to figure out the mimic because if you just have a mimic do a bunch of changes throughout a mission and then you like ask right at the start of the game how old are you and then like 30 minutes later you ask how old are you again and it's a different age and you're obviously not dealing with a thay it's probably a mimic because it might at any at some point have turned into a thay changed its age and then continued going i have no idea this is completely like speculation i don't know if that worked i don't know if that works uh, I would have to do some testing with a mimic. That's an interesting question though. Maybe that works. Uh, if you know that for some reason, let me know in the comments down below. Um, but anyway, we were talking about how did you die? How did you die? It's just flavor text. It just tells you something about the ghost, which is fun. It just gives you a little bit of like lore. This ghost drowned, I think it said. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't do anything. Uh, and then obviously the other wish is hide and seek. Hide and seek is... Um, uh, the way to trigger a, a hunt with the board now there's many ways to trigger a hunt as you saw at the very beginning if you walk away from the board while it's turned on and you don't say goodbye it'll break cause a hunt if you try to use the board ask a question when you don't have enough sanity which by the way if you use it at 49 percent sanity and you ask where are you the the board will take all of your sanity and then not even give you an answer and it'll just break immediately. So it's really punishing. You really have to make sure that you have enough question to ask uh, the, or enough sanity to ask the question that you want, because otherwise it's gonna take your sanity and then start a hunt anyway. Uh, but if you say hide and seek, it's just a little bit of a joke wish. And I think, isn't there another one? Yeah, there's, it, it doesn't say all the questions here because uh, before I do that, there's also, Wait, let me, there's a, there's another wish that they don't have in here, which does, a, or another question that does absolutely nothing. Um, Marco. Polo, that's, that's all it does. It just Marco Polo. <laughs> that's another like question you can ask. It doesn't do anything. I don't know if it drains any of your sanity, but it's just like some little information. And when you're using voice recognition, uh, it, you have to keep in mind that sometimes it'll give you an answer, but it doesn't actually answer the question. For example, the one joke question we often ask is, how many pickles can you fit up your ass? How many pickles can you fit up your ass? Okay, it's not one respond. I don't think it's going to respond to this question. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, there's actually an... Uh, wait, why don't we turn off the breaker? Are you sh Dude, why did you go so fucking annoying? It doesn't want to answer that question, but sometimes if you ask weird, funny questions like... I don't know how stupid are you it'll say maybe and you're like what the hell maybe that's so funny that's just 
That's just the way the game is coded. The voice recognition sometimes picks up questions that you didn't actually ask, which I encourage you to ask those questions. Now, there's another one that they didn't include in the text-to-speech uh, menu for whatever reason, which is how many people ha have you killed? How many people have you killed? Two. It'll say just a random number two which i think they changed this right if someone dies throughout the mission this number will increase right it'll become three four five etc um i think i think it didn't used to do that but i think they changed that recently um so that's it it's, it's also just flavor text it doesn't say anything uh it's just a flavor text wish there's another wish i don't know why this menu is so useless the the text-to-speech menu doesn't contain like half the wishes there's another wish or sorry i said wishes i mean question there's another question which is are you in this room or are you close what Oh, whoops. Wait, it, it, it picked up where are you? That's not what I meant to say. Uh, or are we alone? Is that the one? Wait, let me quickly take some sanity pills. Dude, I had barely enough sanity to ask. Dude, look at that. I had only 5% sanity left after asking that wish. I'm glad it didn't explode. Sometimes it's really risky to use the board this way because it'll just pick up a question that you're not asking at all. Um, but I think... Is it, are we, are you close? Yeah, I said that though, are you close, right? Or wait, are you alone? Let's say, are you close? There you go. It'll say yes or no, depending on if you're in the room with the ghost. If I try that over here, are you close? Are you close? It'll say no, because I'm no longer in the ghost room. So this is a very niche way of finding the ghost. I think this takes a lot less sanity, though. Let's quickly see. I asked that question twice. I'm very curious what it, how much sanity it drains, because I have actually no idea. These are questions that I basically never use, but it is interesting. Uh, oh, that actually takes so much of your sanity. 20% for asking that wish? That's so useless. Okay, so 20% to ask, are you close? And it'll just usually say no. <laughs> uh, because you're not in the ghost room. So yeah, that's a bit of a, a bit of a scam right there, but it is a fun thing to know. And then I think that's basically all the wishes. I think that's all of them or all the questions that you can ask with the Ouija board. Obviously, the one that's left for us to do is hide and seek, which is the, let me, which is the hunting wish. Let me just turn on the breaker real quick so we can see what's going on here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one more knock, knock. Was that one? Knock, knock. Ah, there you go. Okay, that's an additional funny wish. Oh my God, this, you can say knock, knock and it'll just say who's there. That's, I think that's all of them. Um, oh, there, wait, 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 can you stop? Goodbye. Goodbye. Isn't there also how many people are in this room or something? Oh my God, you son of a gun. This, these fucking ghosts are making my life impossible. Um, a bit, I, I think there's also how many people are in this room, which I think is just another joke question. If this ghost would just stop hunting already. Okay, there we go. Finally stopped, you piece of shit. Um, how many people are in this room? Yeah, what? I think it gives you an accurate response. Like it just counts the amount of people that are in this room. Wait, let's see. If I ask it in the ghost room, how many people are in this room? Oh, there it says two because it's me and the ghost. Okay, that's pretty interesting. I kind of, that's kind of cool. It's very cool that you can ask questions like that because they just add an additional like, bit of lore to the ghost and it makes it feel more like an actual ouija board so yeah there's a lot of hidden questions that you can ask now obviously oh yeah there's also how is your day how are you dude there's a it just says like cold it just says something cold in this case uh anyway those are like tons and tons of meme questions that you can just mess around with now it's time for hide and seek oh my god you fucking cheater <laughs> this ghost is just hunting while well, I was trying to say I didn't think I'm gonna lose my mind anyway we'll just wait until this shit's over and then we'll say it god damn okay finally Jesus Christ you're done uh, okay 
So now, I mean, we're immediately gonna get another hunt, but hide and seek. Hide and seek. It's gonna count down from five, four, three. If you run away from the board at this point, by the way, it doesn't break. Um, this is like at which point it doesn't break, but it will break once the countdown is over and that's it. It'll just trigger a hunt. Um, does, how much sanity? Does anyone know how much sanity that drains? Because I don't think it drains much sanity. Uh, but I think it does drain a little bit of sanity. So you need to... Oh, wait. 20? Zero? Zero percent sanity? Well, it doesn't drain a significant amount of sanity. But uh, it used to be the case that if you didn't have enough sanity to wish for or to, to ask the question hide and seek it would break instantly so the ghost would basically cheat at hide and seek by not even like counting down and just immediately triggering a hunt so yeah there it's 25 percent. okay so it will drain 25 percent, which i really don't know why it drains sanity it seems oh i'm gonna die by the way this hunt is so what the fuck okay never mind i'm alive um it seems really rude that that drains sanity because a way wetter, better way to, cha to to trigger a hunt with the board is just walk away from it and let it break by itself because that way you'll trigger a hunt without losing any sanity at all. So yeah, the board is one of those rare cursed possessions where you can trigger a hunt with it without actually losing any sanity. But anyway, that was a lot of talking about, I don't know what ghost is this, whatever. Um, that was a lot of talk. Let's just say that was, it was a little aggressive. Maybe Banshee, I don't think it was Oni, whatever. Polter, doesn't really matter. Um, that was a lot of talking about the Ouija board because there's just a lot to talk about there. We have two more curse positions uh, left over. It wasn't on Rio, whatever. Uh, two more curse positions left over. I think first of all, we're gonna start to talk about the tarot cards. And then at the very end, we'll talk about the monkey ball. Okay, so the tarot cards are quite complicated because they are the only curse possession that you cannot control what happens with it. Oh my God, once again, we're gonna have one of these ghosts, I see. Um, there's 10 cards total. Every time you right click to pull a card, it'll give you a random card. Now, I'm not gonna be able to give you the exact chances of every card. I know two of them, which are the most important. Um, Hanged Man is the one card you really don't wanna see. It is the card that will instantly kill the user no matter what, it'll just kill you. Now that's only a 1% chance when you pull a card that it is the hanged man. So it's really rare, but it can happen, but it will immediately kill you. And the other one is the high priestess. The high priestess is a 2% chance and the high priestess will give you a revive. It'll give you an extra life. It'll either, if there's already someone dead, it'll revive them. Or if no one's dead, the next player that dies will immediately be, be revived upon dying. So it's an incredible witch or an incredible card, uh, but it's obviously extremely rare, only 2%. Now, most of the time you'll see one of the following cards, which let's just pull one card just to see what it is. Um, the Wheel of Fortune card. Wheel of Fortune is a card that will, uh, you pick it up, and it'll randomly either become red dust or like red smoke or green smoke. If it becomes red smoke, it reduces your sanity by 25%. If it becomes green smoke, it'll increase your sanity by 25%. So it's basically either a sanity pill or a sanity drain uh, randomly. Just 50% of the time when you pull that card, you get sanity or you lose sanity. Okay, next one. Um, the moon card. All right, I'm gonna immediately leave the map. The moon card is there's the moon card and the sun card. The moon card, if you pull it, it'll drain all of your sanity. Only the user, by the way. So you get immediately set the 0% sanity, which seems really bad, but honestly, the moon card is one of my favorite tarot cards because the main problem with the tarot cards is that because it is random, if you want to use it for a specific purpose, let's say that I want to use it to get a hunt. I might not get a hunt at all by using the tarot cards. I might even like get the opposite. I might even gain sanity, even though I don't want to gain sanity at all. Like it might completely screw you over. So the moon card, in my opinion, is usually very good because it allows you to get a hunt. So after that, you can just drop the tarot cards and now go into the map and you'll get a hunt. Um, and by the way, because this is a very important thing to know about the cursed possessions if for whatever reason the cursed possession drains your sanity and that allows the ghost to hunt 
That does not count as a cursed hunt. Let's say I asked the, the Ouija board, where are you? And then I asked like, how old are you a few times? My sanity will be below 50, so the ghost will be able to hunt. However, because the cursed possession didn't technically trigger the hunt, um, it doesn't cause cursed hunts to happen. So the hunts will still be short. There'll still be a long grace period. So that's a really nice way for cursed possessions to, to allow you to be able to get hunted without being like really punished by those cursed hunts. So that's really important. That's why the board is sometimes useful for that. Uh, and the tarot cards, if you get the moon card. Now the opposite is the sun card, which will do the complete opposite. It'll instead set your sanity to 100%. So instead of the moon card drains your sanity to zero, the sun card sets your sanity to 100%. And honestly, in my opinion, the moon, the sun card is the worst card in the entire, uh, in the entire tarot card deck. The reason why is because when I use the tarot cards, it's almost always because I either want to hunt, I want a ghost event, I want activity or something. And the last thing I want to see is getting my sanity to 100% because that means the way sanity works in this game is that the lower your sanity, the more uh, interactions the ghost will do, the more ghost events. Uh, obviously, the ghost can only hunt when you're at low sanity. So if you're looking for activity, the sun card is the last you want to see. But if you, for some reason, want to get 100% sanity, the sun card is the way to do that. Uh, anyway, I'm going to quickly take all the pills. Then we're going to get immediately another moon card here, obviously. But we'll see what happens. I'm going to talk about all the cards, by the way. Not just the cards that I get here. But we'll just see what we get. Um, pull another. A devil card. Which is, devil card, one of my favorite cards to see. It's a relatively common card. What it does is it triggers a ghost event. That's all it does. Uh, no matter where the ghost is, the ghost doesn't have to be close to you or anything. Uh, it, if you pull a devil card, it'll just teleport the ghost to you and then do a ghost event at your location. So it's a great way to get a ghost photo. It's a great way to, for example, right there, the Oni cannot do that ghost event that just happened. So we can uh, rule out that it is an Oni by 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 that interaction. So it's just because it, like it's um it's just nice to be able to get a ghost event get the ghost event objective get a ghost photo etc etc it's just useful next card it's gonna be the hermit card in my opinion the worst card besides fool obviously uh that you really don't want to see what the hermit card does is it'll lock the ghost in the ghost room or in the room that it's currently in i think for 60 seconds that's all it does that's all it does Completely useless in my opinion, uh, because that's never really what you're looking for when you're pulling tarot cards, but that's that's what it does. Um, this card, power card right here, is similar to pulling a pin of the voodoo doll. It'll just trigger an interaction. It'll trigger the ghost to do an interaction. However, for some reason, I, I will, I've asked the devs about this, but they are being kind of elusive about it and maybe a little bit ignoring me a little bit i feel like the tarot cards or the tower card is extremely bugged um for some reason whenever i pull a tower card there's about a 70 percent chance that the ghost will just do absolutely nothing and cj has said that it only does nothing if there's nothing in the room for it to interact with so let's say you the ghost is in a really empty room if you pull a tower card similar to using the voodoo doll if there's nothing the ghost can interact with it won't interact with anything it just won't do anything but i've had it do nothing even when i put the room full of shit so i don't know the tower card just seems very hit or miss for me it is a pretty useful card if you pull that at the start of a game and you hear a door touch next to you you know oh i found the ghost room it's just uh, a way to find the ghost room using the tar tower or tarot cards um and it's also a really common card all right next one uh wheel of fortune fool never mind fool the fool card is just a troll card uh if you pull a card they're like if you pull a fool card, instead of showing you the fool, it'll instead show you a random other card, which can be something like Hanged Man or High Priestess. And then right as it's about to activate its effect, instead of activating the effect of the Hanged Man or the High Priestess, it'll instead turn into a fool and then do nothing. It literally does nothing besides spook you. Like if you see a Hanged Man and it suddenly turns into a fool you're like god damn it you got me which is just a fun thing in my opinion so yeah um another thing about that if you use the tarot cards during a hunt every card will be a fool if you uh 
So do not use the, the tarot cards during a hunt because you'll literally just waste all of your cards and nothing will happen with them. That's just a way to prevent the ghost from breaking during hunts because let's say you get like, uh, I don't know, a death card during a hunt or a devil card during a hunt. Like, how's that supposed to work? How can the ghost do a ghost event while it's already hunting? Like, it'll just lead to so many uh, weird random situations that the devs have just decided you don't get a card. If you pull cards, it's just all going to be full. So don't do that. Um, you can do it during a ghost event. Yeah, and any you can do it at any point, just not during a hunt. All right, next card is going to be Hermit again, which hermits you're going to see a lot. I wish they were less common because they're super useless. Death card. Death card is very simple. It triggers a hunt. That's what it does. It doesn't cost you any sanity. It just triggers a hunt, which is actually really cool about the tarot cards. Um, that they are one of the only cursed possessions that can trigger hunts without you losing any sanity at all. Um, so yeah, it, it does obviously trigger cursed hunts from that point onward. So your hunts are going to be 20 seconds longer. Your great spirit is only going to be one second. If I pull this card here, it's going to be another death card. No, it's going to be a fool because I'm doing it during a hunt, right? So don't, sorry, don't pull cards during a hunt. It's going to lead to nothing. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. All right, thank you. Hunts over. Okay, so uh, let's see. What are cards we haven't... Oh my god. <laughs> That's so rude. Um, what are cards we haven't seen? There... Let me think. Is there a card we haven't seen here? We have... Se I We have obviously not seen the Hanged Man or the High Priestess, but I explained those to you. Um, any other card? Sun card gives you the sanity. I already explained that. I think that's all of them. I think that's all of the different cards there are. Uh, most of the time, you really want to see those High Priestess cards, which is like this... Uh, this like angel wing card, which is super cool. Uh, and it is like, it, it feels so good, man. The, the, the existence of a high priestess card just makes the tarot cards so fun to use. There's just so many fun things about them. Tarot cards are a lot of people's favorite curse possession, especially in multiplayer. It's so fun to just mess around and uh, use the tarot cards in a group. It's just really funny. Uh, you can also, yeah, let me quickly leave this lobby uh because i had no idea what that ghost was so i can show you you can see which cards you've already pulled over here uh these are all the cards the fool does nothing wheel of fortune gives you 25 or loses 25 tower card triggers an interaction devil card triggers a ghost event death card makes a haunt happen hermit locks the ghost in the room uh moon zero percent sanity sun 100 percent sanity high priestess you get a revive hanged man you get killed that's it uh, which, by the way, these will start showing up in, like, all the Cursed Possessions will start showing up in the lobby as you use them. If you use a Cursed Possession once, they'll show up in your in your lobby. You have to get all the cards individually to see them here. So if you've never had a High Priestess or you've never had a Hanged Man, it won't show up in here. But anyway, now it's time, finally, for the last and most complicated Cursed Possession of them all, the Monkey Paw. Now, the monkey paw is in some pretty, uh, like, sneaky positions on each of the maps. A lot of the times, it's inside of a closet. Sometimes it's, uh, like, in Grafton. It's in the twin bedroom holding an axe. And Blee still is on a chest in the master bedroom. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to have to, like, learn these locations over time. I can make a video about all of the different locations if you want. I've made that video in the past. Uh, but I mean, I can just redo it if you want. But anyway, the monkey palm is very unique. It is, in my opinion, and pretty much objectively, the single best curse possession in the entire game. Because it's basically as if you, it's basically like the tarot cards, but instead of giving you something random, you can choose what you want to get out of the monkey paw. If you uh, same thing with the with the Ouija board, if you want to know exactly what you can do with the monkey paw, you should go into your options here, turn on text to speech, and then right click with this. It'll give you this menu, so you can see what to do. So let's talk about everything that this can do. I wish to see the ghost. Uh, recently, this wish has changed. Um, what this wish does is it will uh, blind you. It'll give you a blind, blinding effect, which is kind of like, basically the, the theme with the monkey paw is that it's like an evil genie. It gives you your wish, but like in the malicious compliance kind of way where, it, oh, come on, uh, where it will do what you want, but like as, uh, 
Like, you should have written the fine print kind of way, basically. So, it blinds you, which is stupid because that allows you not to see the ghost. But, at the same time, it also makes the ghost do a ghost event. So, it makes the ghost do a ghost event where it is at that moment. Um, then you can take the ghost photo and then similar to the music box, similar to the summoning circle, after that ghost event is over, it'll trigger a hunt. So be very careful. So you, um, this has changed recently before it was changed. It, if you wished, I wish to see the ghost, it would spawn the ghost in your face and then blind you. Then you could obviously take a photo, a run away, but that was too powerful because it basically made the summoning circle completely obsolete because that's basically the ex exact same effect as the summoning circle, the only downside being that you get blinded, but you can do it literally anywhere. Um, so now you have to first know where's the ghost room, um, then use the I wish to see the ghost. So if you want to take it, if you want to do this for taking the ghost photo, that is at least, um, then you can take the ghost photo and run away. Now, the problem with this wishes, which they're probably going to fix in the near future. So this might be outdated. Um, currently, if you say I wish to see the ghost, it blinds you instantly, which sometimes will lead to situations where you cannot find the ghost at all, even if it's close to you. Um, what they are going to do in a hot fix down the line is uh, they're going to blind you as soon as the hunt starts. So it's going to uh, not immediately blind you, but only after the ghost event is over, which is a would be way better. So I hope they do that at least. I like the way this wish works. It's just a, you you trigger a hunt. Um, and the problem, I think, with let's let's just do this one. Oh, fuck. Uh, actually, this is perfect that you're here. I wonder what happens if you use it during a ghost event. Let's try. It triggered... It, what? I couldn't see the ghost at all. I've been scammed? <laughs> okay. I'm assuming it did a ghost event on top of the existing ghost event, but I couldn't see it right there. So yeah, you can see this effect. You can see how I'm like basically blinded. That's because um, the, I wish to see the ghost. This will last for the entire hunt until the hunt is over, after which it'll disappear. Now, I think a problem with the monkey paw, for some reason, not a problem necessarily, but something, a bug. I don't know if it's gonna happen here. Let's see, is this hunt gonna be over in like a few seconds here? Okay, never mind. Oh, there we go. Wait, now it's over. I think that was just a normal cursed hunt. Because there's a problem with some of the wishes that they don't trigger cursed hunts. Uh, but I think that was just a regular cursed hunt. You can see that was a really long hunt, so yeah. I wish to see the ghost. Now the blindness effect is gone. I got a ghost event. I got a hunt and the blindness effect is gone. It also doesn't drain your sanity, by the way, as far as I know. Yeah, look at that. I mean, besides maybe the ghost event, I'm still at 100% sanity. I've already gotten a hunt and everything. So yeah, that is like having a summoning circle, but without like, it's so stupid, dude. The monkey paw is so horrendously overpowered. I, I, it, it's so overpowered to the point that it just makes me like irrationally mad at the game sometimes. Cause like, I just hate how so many cursed possessions are completely obsolete compared to the monkey paw. So if you're going to hear me be a little agitated while talking about the monkey paw, that's the reason for it. Uh, it's just I have like a, a, an irrational hate towards it because it's just so overpowered. So anyway, that's just one of the many things you can do with the monkey paw. Get a ghost event, get a ghost photo, get a hunt, like all these things you can just do with a simple press of a button. Anyway, next thing is I wish for activity. What this does is once again it has it does what you want but it has some side effects it increases the ghost activity by a ton for the next 60 seconds but it also breaks the breaker forever and it locks the front door so you can't escape for those 60 seconds and you from that point onwards don't have any lights and especially with the new sanity system where if you're in the dark you will like if the the lights are way more powerful with the new sanity system uh basically the way it works i've made a video about this if you want to go in detail but if the light is on in a room you don't lose any sanity no matter if you're standing in the dark or not so it's super powerful so yeah that's what the i wish for activity does just gives you more activity but locks the door and um breaks the break i wish to trap the ghost is bugged in a way that makes it one of the most powerful ways to find the ghost room in the entire game i wish to trap the ghost traps the ghost what a joke what is the or what, what a surprise what does that mean whatever room the ghost is in the doors of that room will become locked and the ghost cannot leave that room 
for 60 seconds. However, the side effect is that you, the player, will also be locked in whatever room you are in. However, well, you can probably see where this is going. This only works if the room that you're in has doors. If I'm standing in a room like this, like the dining, there is no doors. It's not going to create some kind of invisible barrier between these rooms that blocks me from going that way. No, it's just going to do absolutely nothing. If I say I wish to trap the ghost in this room, it'll lock the ghost in whatever room the ghost is in, but it won't lock me in. What I think this wish should do is at the very least, if it cannot lock the player in a room, at least lock the front door. Because the problem is that if you say I wish the ghost was trapped, the, the ghost will be trapped, obviously. And if you have positioned yourself in such a way, which you can do every time because you have full control over when you wish that wish, um, you will just be able to walk out the door. You can just walk out the front door um, and have no problems. After the 60 seconds are over, um, the doors of the room that you might have been locked in will unlock. The rooms or the door of the room that the ghost is in will unlock and a hunt will start. It'll start to hunt. Now, this is a special hunt because for some reason, this hunt doesn't count like a cursed hunt. It doesn't create the 20 seconds longer hunts. It doesn't set the, the grace period to one second. It just makes it just it doesn't do any of that for some reason they just forgot to do that that's a bug with the monkey paw so it's an incredibly powerful wish if you just want to get an early hunt because it doesn't drain any sanity either you can get a free hunt a free hunt or at the cost of no sanity or you can get no hunt because if you just walk out the door and stay out there for 60 seconds it'll try to do a hunt but you're not in the map so it's not going to do a hunt at all and you can just come back in later and uh, no problem no hunt will ever happen so you can literally just walk out and avoid this hunt altogether now why is this so powerful first of all obviously you can trigger a hunt at no sanity cost and it's not even going to cause cursed hunts uh, which is obviously a bug they're probably going to fix it in the near future so maybe this will be outdated by then and it'll tell you very clearly what the ghost room is why does it tell you that because um let's say this room is the ghost room it'll lock the ghost room which i think the ghost room let me quickly use the mirror um yeah 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 okay so the ghost room in this scenario is the the kitchen which is a good example of uh, like this is a scenario where the monkey paw where this wish is useless because obviously if the ghost room doesn't have any doors either it's not gonna lock the door so it's not it, it doesn't do anything but let's say hypothetically that this is actually quickly let me reset until i get a ghost room that does have doors oh hi there ghost room immediately let's see what's the ghost room this time okay it's the uh, uh boy's bedroom which is perfect so um if i say I'm gonna do it out here in the living room where there is no room, no doors that can be locked. Uh, if I were to do it in this room, by the way, it would lock me in, obviously. But I just quickly want to show you just how broken this wish is. We're gonna say, I wish to trap the ghost. It'll use one of your wishes, which, by the way, you have a certain amount of wishes. Uh, every time it costs a finger, depending on your difficulty, you will either have five or less wishes. Uh, so now, this room is locked for 60 seconds. I cannot go in here, but now I know that this is the ghost room. That's why it's so powerful because this lock symbol will tell you exactly this right here is the ghost room. Um, come back here later to find the ghost. It is it, one of the most powerful ways to find the ghost room, even better than the mirror because the mirror still drains 20% of your sanity. Whereas asking this question will cost you absolutely nothing. Now, what I quickly want to do is get the hunt here. So if you stay in the map for 60 seconds after you say this wish, it'll trigger a hunt. Or if you re-enter the map before the 60 seconds are over. If I were to leave this map right now, and after the 60 seconds, it will try to hunt, but I'm not in the map, so it's not going to do anything. But let's just have it hunt right now so we can test if it's still bugged, if the, the cursed hunts are still bugged. Oh, it's hunting now. Okay, perfect. So it's hunting. Going to come over here. Uh, should be around 30 seconds if it's still bugged. I don't know if they secretly fix. Sometimes the developers will secretly fix something without, like, saying anything about it in the patch notes. Um, hello, old grandpa. Are you, is it a myling? I can test for myling here. 
I don't know if it was. I don't think so. It's very loud. Okay, that was definitely a short hunt, right? Use. Let me. Can I run, 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 run? I don't know if I can make it out in 30. Probably. Um, for whatever reason, it's bugged. I don't know why. I don't know how this happened. Yeah, look at that. Look how short that hunt is compared to the cursed hunts. This is just a regular 30 second hunt and all the hunts after this are still going to be short. So this is an incredibly broken, stupid wish that um, not only tells you to ghost room because it's even better than you think. You don't have to find the ghost room within these 60 seconds because right now, even if you just say, I wish the ghost was trapped, then leave the map and go back in later you will still be able to see what the ghost room is. Look at this room. It still has the lock symbol on the door because it's technically still locked. So you can literally just wish that wish, leave the map, and then come back later to uh, check all the doors in the map and see which of the doors has the lock symbol on it. And then if I click on it, you hear the unlock sound because it unlocks the door. And from that point onwards, the lock symbol is gone because it's not actually locked anymore. So it's just insanely powerful. It shows you the ghost room, even if you don't get the negative effect of the wish to go into effect. So yeah, incredibly powerful. Um, anyway, that's like one of my, uh, one of the ways I usually find the ghost room if I have the monkey paw, because it's just super, super, super good. Let's move on to the next wish. The monkey paw is going to take a while because there's a lot to say about it. Um, so these are all the, I wish to see the ghost, I wish for activity, I wish to trap the ghost. Next one. These are related to the player. Um, I wish to be sane, which uh, I said this recently in a video. Very important if you are talking to the, if you're using voice uh, recognition instead of text-to-speech, do not say this. Do not say I wish to be sane because this is not how the wish is implemented. The way, the, the line you have to say to get this wish is I wish for sanity. That's what you have to say. If you try and say I wish to be sane, it will instead hear I wish to be safe because these wishes are so close together that the voice recognition will just always default to I wish to be safe rather than I wish to be sane. So say I wish for sanity. But anyway, what does this wish do? For the entire team, it sets the sanity to 50%. So this is a really rare wish that doesn't, or really rare, rare thing with uh, with the cursed possession, that it doesn't just affect the player using the cursed possession, but the entire team. So everyone's sanity gets set to 50%, um, no matter what it was. If it was lower, it gets set higher. If it was higher, it gets set lower. Now there's a sneaky extra effect, two extra sneaky effects based uh, uh, on top of this. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Um, the first sneaky effect, which is actually incredibly important to know, is that it changes the ghost room of the ghost to be any other random room in the map, including Gorios. Gorios will also change their ghost room if you use this wish. So keep that in mind. Um, you might screw yourself over by make like, especially if you use this on a big map, it'll suddenly be on the complete opposite side of the map and you'll have to completely refine it. The idea of this wish that the devs originally has was that they, that the wish was supposed to be, I wish to start anew, which is like, uh, the idea was that it would reset your sanity to 100%, uh, change where the ghost room was, and maybe originally even change what ghost type you're dealing with, but it was probably like too complicated, so they decided against that option. And, uh, and when they uh, decided against it, they realized that setting your sanity to 100% was way too powerful, so they made it 50% instead. Now, on top of changing the ghost room of the player, it also, from that point onwards, drains your sanity at like a two times faster rate for some reason. So basically, as soon as you say, I wish for sanity, it sets your sanity to 50 and you'll drain sanity mega fast from that point onwards. So you'll basically immediately be in hunting range again. Um, now, this is another situation which I love this wish because um, it'll set your sanity to 50, which means it can start, the ghost can start hunting from that point, but it won't cause cursed hunts because technically the monkey paw didn't cause the hunt from happening. It just set your sanity into the right point where you could get hunt. So yeah, uh, that's all it does. It just sets your sanity to 50, changes the ghost room and you uh, will lose more sanity from that point onwards. I wish to be safe. Very powerful wish, but you need to know how to use it. How does it work? I'm gonna go over here real quick, see if this hiding spot is blocked. 
Uh, it's not. Okay, we're gonna have to find a hiding spot that's blocked, uh, which could be anything. This one? Okay, this one right here. If you, can you shut the hell up? Okay, there we go. Uh, we can also do this one. Let's do this one. If you say, I wish to be safe, it will unlock the closest hiding spot uh, to you. So in this case, it will unlock this. It removes the clutter that's in the closest hiding spot to your player, and it'll also break the light. Uh, now, you might think it ends there, but oh boy, it does not end there. I think it doesn't drain sanity. I'm just quickly checking. I can't really know what my sanity was, though. But I don't think it drains sanity. However, there's a very sneaky extra effect on top of the wish, which is that from this point onwards, the ghost will be able to find me everywhere on the map. Only if I'm talking or if I'm using my uh, my electronics. Why, what do I mean with this? Basically, uh, usually if you have a hunt, uh, the ghost will be able to detect the player from like 10 meters away, which whatever, like a specific uh, far away range. If the ghost is further than that or on a different floor, it won't be able to find you. However, with this wish, the ghost, the range at which the ghost can hear your equipment and can hear you talking becomes infinite so it will be if you're on a big map and the ghost is on a complete opposite side of the map if you wish this wish from that point onwards the ghost will always come to you if you like have your equipment turned on at any point during the hunt which is like really uh really tricky now this only applies to the person using the wish it doesn't apply to anyone else in the team you can troll your friends this way by wishing this and then hoping that they turn on their equipment it doesn't work like that it only applies to you um but it can also be useful this is a this is like why i love the cursed possessions because there's many situations in which you maybe want the ghost to find your location like maybe you're on a big map and you for some reason cannot do a specific hunt test that you want to do if you wish to be safe all of a sudden the ghost will beeline it straight to you and then you can do whatever test you want to do so yeah uh can be powerful but can also be really tricky i rarely use this wish uh myself so anyway and obviously it also breaks the light right it breaks the light which is if you're using it in the ghost room or a room you want to stay in a lot that can be punishing because your sanity will start draining um because the lights are broken anyway next wish um i wish to leave very powerful wish in some situations i wish to leave will unlock the front door and the front door only i think on sunny meadows it also unlocks the the like side doors but i'd have to quickly check that after this in a moment um but it'll basically unlock the front door however it'll do, so let, let's just lock let's do a wish that locks the front door let's say uh because this is our last wish oh no this is not our last wish that but whatever let's uh wish for activity wish for activity which will lock the front door so now the front door is locked. For 60 seconds, I can't unlock this. It's just locked, I can't open it. But if I say I wish to leave, it'll blind me for a little bit. It'll freeze, I'm, I'm running as fast as I can. I can't move and now I can move again. It freezes the player uh, for like, I don't know, three seconds or something. Um, and then you can leave uh, and the front door unlocks even though it's not supposed to be open right now. Now. Because you get frozen, the player gets frozen for like three seconds. What you saw when I used this earlier, when I tried to escape the Dio, um, it killed me because I became so slow that I couldn't outrun the Dio. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. You can't really use it while while like running from a ghost. It, and I, they made that this way on purpose, right? Because otherwise this wish will be wildly overpowered. If at any point you can just say, I wish to leave, and then you just leave during the hunt, that would be insane. So there's a huge downside. It freezes you and it blinds you for a little bit. Uh, so you can't really escape uh, all too well with it. But yeah, that's how you can escape. Even if the front door was locked, you can just wish that. And that's the only downside. The only downside is that it um, like slows you and blinds you for a little bit. There's no additional... I don't think it drains your sanity at all. It doesn't do anything. That's literally all it is. Um, yeah, also a very powerful situation. Now, an additional thing with that is that it doesn't unlock all the doors. What does that mean? This is a bug, but so maybe they're going to fix it. But basically, if you... Uh, say I wish the ghost was trapped and that locks you in a room because you were silly and you didn't use it in a room that had no doors You can't say I wish to leave that won't unlock the door the rooms or the the doors 
or any random room. It will only unlock the front door, which is obviously a bug. It's supposed to unlock all the rooms, but that's just the way it works. So if you lock yourself in with I Wish the Ghost Was Trapped, you can't escape using I Wish to Leave. So yeah, keep that in mind in case you were planning on doing something silly. Okay, next wish, um, which now the breaker is broken, by the way. So ripperoni. Um, now we're in the other category. I wish to revive my friend. You, you're already gonna know that there's a that there's some kind of uh, caveat on this. It does what it says it does. It actually revives a person. If someone is dead, and you say I wish, wish to revive my friend, it will 100% of the time revive that other person. Now it depends on. I think the first person that died will be revived. However, big caveat is that 50% of the time. It will kill the user of this wish. So there's a 50% chance that when you say this, it'll kill you, <laughs> which is obviously a pretty big downside. So use at your own expense, but you can, for example, use this if you have like a friend that is bringing all the items and they die, so they would lose all their items. You can bring them back to life to save their items and like be a helpful friend, or you can just take the 50% chance and like just just gamble gamble with your life it's fun it's like cool i like this wish um 50 of the time you'll get a free revive 50 of the time you'll just trade one for one it's basically like no matter like it's 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 always good to use it because the the you either play even or you just get a free revive basically uh, i mean obviously you don't want to use it if you're the one that's gonna die but like if if everyone was like completely selfless it would always be good to use this wish anyway next wish let's talk about weather first before we talk about this one uh weather it's what it sounds like it literally just you can set the weather to whatever you want right now let's see what weather it is uh, this is gonna be our i'm not gonna use this wish actually because i only have one more wish um right now i think it's just clear weather it literally all it does is like set the weather to whatever weather you want to do you can wish for sun rain clear sun I'm assuming it means I wish for sunrise. <laughs> I don't think you can wish for daytime. That's not a thing. There's no like rare weather you can also all only set with the monkey paw. It's just sunrise. So yeah, you just you just set it to a specific weather. That's all it does. Now I think this will drain your sanity by like 10%. Um, but that's only that's all it does. Uh, but it can be really useful if, for example, you're playing on a campsite map and it's heavy rain, so you can't light the campfire, and you really want to light the campfire, or um, so then you can change the weather from heavy rain to something else so you can light the campfire. If you're playing on a, on a house map, in my opinion, snow weather is by far the most powerful weather in the entire game because it will lower the temperature of the rooms way quicker so you can find freezing way faster. So you can wish for snow and get freezing easier that way. So yeah, there's a certain... Uh, a few situations in which uh changing the weather can be really useful maybe you're annoyed by the thunder of heavy rain so you can just change it anyway so that's beside the points now for the last and arguably most powerful not really in my opinion wish there is the i wish for knowledge this is an insanely risky wish let me go over here what it does it is it will trigger a hunt close to the player using this wish so it won't just trigger a hunt in the ghost room. No, it'll actually teleport the ghost close to you and then start a hunt from your location, which is terrifying. On top of that, it'll do basically the same effect that the I wish to leave thing did, which is locking the player in place for like three seconds. And then on top of that, it will also deafen the player and uh, so it will make your audio completely muffled and it will make you blind now not entirely blind It'll just make your like eyesight way worse now What could possibly be worth all this hassle by the way really important this blindness effect and this deafness effect Does not go away after the hunt like with the I wish to see the ghost wish it stays forever from that that entire rest of the mission You can't see you can't hear you're completely fucked now. You are normal speed, but it's just insane the downside what does it give you in return for all that shit it uh rules out one of the evidences and all the ghosts associated with it so let's say that this ghost is a phantom there it'll just so let's say it's a phantom um which has spirit box uv and dots any of the go uh, evidence that the ghost doesn't have will or one of them will randomly be ruled out 
and that's it that's all it gives you now sometimes this can be really useful uh which by the way fun like little tidbit of information about this is that this works even if you're playing zero evidence runs if you're playing zero evidence one evidence two evidence three evidence on any of these situations this wish will work and it'll rule out one of the evidence you you can for sure rule out which is kind of interesting um but um that's all sometimes you'll like already know that it's dots and like you or like you'll know this for example you know that it's uv you know that it do, it's dots you decide to wish for knowledge and it'll rule out like uh let's see it'll rule out freezing temps how useful i knew it was a phantom banshee or gorio after you ruling out freezing temps i know that it's phantom banshee or gorio so there's actually a chance that the evidence it rules out is completely useless because it was impossible for that evidence to be correct anyway so yeah there's actually a chance you get nothing now the way i would recommend you use this and the only way you use this wish is by going into a hiding spot already and then wishing for knowledge because be like it's complete darkness escaping while this is happening, while you are blinded, deafened, slowed, is almost entirely impossible. I would just recommend to uh, sit in the hiding spot, wish to wish, and now, uh, which I can't see fucking anything, you can see that ghost orbs have been ruled out. Ghost orbs have been ruled out, so I know that... Um, can I, I, I need to close this door. I don't know what's happening right now. Uh, it's super quiet. So... Uh, if, if you were, like, uh, at the very beginning of a contract, which I would recommend not using this at the beginning, but, like, it just helps you out. I, I would recommend to only use this wish when you're in a hiding spot and to only use it, um, like, at the very end of a contract because you really do not want to continue playing after you do this. Now, let's just wait until the end of the hunt real quick. I think it's, is it over? I think it's over now. <laughs> this is what the game looks like. You can't, I cannot hear the breaker br that's broken. You can't hear the light switch flickering. You can't hear anything. You can't hear your teammates. You can't hear the ghost. You can't hear the ghost footsteps. You can barely hear a door like this. You hear that? It is just completely fucked. Now, if you have the tier three night vision, uh, it does help a little bit. You can, if you turn on the tier three night vision, kind of see honestly so this is another thing that you could like if you already have unlocked a tier 3 night vision you might be able to use this wish slightly earlier and then you can still see a little bit because this like has so much brightness that it kind of counteracts the effect um but yeah it is as good as having an evidence ruled out is i think if it gave you an evidence instead like if it confirmed one evidence I'm, it might be better, but it would have to confirm something you don't already have. Like, let's say that you already know it's UV or dots. If it's gonna confirm UV, like, that's completely useless. So, I don't know. I, I just think that as good as this sounds on paper, every time I've used it, it's been almost entirely useless. I've never used the I wish for knowledge wish and been like, oh my god, that just solved the mission for me. Now I know what goes to this. It's just really, really rare. And I also kind of, like, the side effect is so big. Like, after this, you just have to leave. Now, there's a few side effects, as I said. You can use the tier 3 night vision to be able to see a little bit. And if you die and then get revived it'll actually get rid of the blindness and the deafness effect. So that's another thing you could do. You could just kill yourself and then have your friend revive you with the monkey paw, which is a thing you could do. But anyway, let's just... I think we saw EMF earlier or something, right? Yeah, EMF. So it's one of these random ghosts. Uh, I'm just going to say Wraith because it was close to me. I have no idea what's going on. Um, anyway, I want to... There's a few more things, like a few more... It was a Wraith, I'm insane. Okay, um... So that is every single curse possession individually explained. Now, there's a few more things, uh, like, or especially one thing I want to mention. Um, there is a special ability related to the curse possession uh, or curse possessions that you need to keep in mind. Uh, ghosts, some ghosts uh, have 
a tendency to do specific ghost events. So it's just the mare has a, has a higher chance to do light break ghost events. The Oni cannot do the airball ghost event. The uh, Banshee will do singing ghost events more often. These will also count for ghost events caused by cursed possession. So if you get a light break ghost event after you use a tarot card, you might... Like, you could go like, okay, maybe I'm dealing with a mare here. That's another thing. Uh, if you see an airball, you know you're not dealing with an oni. Now, a very special interaction is with the shade. If you use the summoning circle or the music box, I think for these two it counts. I don't know if it counts for monkey paw and tarot cards. I'd have to do a ton of testing. I just don't know. But if you use the music box or the summoning circle and the ghost that shows up in the summoning circle is a shadow ghost model, you know with a 100% certainty that this is a shade because the shade is the only ghost that can become a shadow ghost model in those situations. Now, this is actually a bug, as I've said like a hundred times during this video, but it's just like this game is fucking broken as hell. Uh, and literally like the main thing you learn as a veteran player is how to use these bugs to your advantage or how to work around all these fucking bugs. The game is hanging, hanging by a thread, basically. But this is a bug. It's not supposed to work this way. The way it's supposed to work is that the shade is supposed to have a higher chance to be a shadow and the other ghost still ha uh, still are, or should have a small chance to be shadow. It should be a one third chance for any ghost to be shadows and a two third chance for the shade to be shadow. However, instead it's the shade is the only ghost that can be this and any other ghost cannot be shadow ghost models during the summoning circle and the music box event. So keep that in mind. If you ever see that, you know immediately that it's a shade, unless they ever fix this bug, in which case that's will, that'll be outdated. I'll probably have to do like maybe a pinned comment or something, or maybe in a uh, like a, a redo of this video down the line when they fix all these bugs. Uh, so yeah, besides that, I think I've talked about everything completely like the way i do these guides you can i know it's a meme at this point that when i do a guide it's like a two hour long thing but i literally taught my voice is broken i've talked for two hours about every little fucking detail about this game because in my opinion like doing a quick five minute guide just like rambling down the list of things you can do with these items and like not giving any context of when you would use them how exactly the like uh, upsides downsides special scenarios like those are the things that are important to me and that like matter in my opinion so that's why these videos are fucking two hours long because uh there's just so much nuance that get lost if you try to make like a, a, a short guide that lasts five minutes but anyway to quickly recap the, now I'll, I'll do the short version so we can see how long it would have been summoning circle you can have to light five candles. Each candle takes 16% sanity. If you don't have enough sanity, it won't work. If you light all the candles, ghost event will start. After that, it'll be a hunt. That's it. Voodoo doll. If you use a pin, it'll trigger an interaction. If you pull the hard pin, it'll trigger a hunt. Uh, normal pins take 5% sanity. Hard pin takes 10% sanity. Ouija board. If you use the Ouija board, you can ask questions such as where's the ghost? Um, how old are you? Where's the bone? How insane am I? Uh, how are you today? Etc. Etc. There's lots of questions, which once again, you can figure out by using text to speech. But if you really want to, because there's a lot of questions that don't show up in text to speech, you can go back to that part of the video where we go through all of it. It'll give you this information at the cost of sanity. If you use it when you have no sanity or not enough sanity, it'll break, cause a hunt. If you walk away from it without saying goodbye, it'll break, cause a hunt if you say hide and seek it'll count down from five break cause a hunt uh okay that's the ouija board mirror it'll show you the ghost room not the ghost location the ghost room if you don't have enough sanity it'll break uh cost 20 percent sanity to pull up uh if you wait too long it'll drain an additional seven and a half sanity per second all the tarot cards uh full card does nothing um Wheel of Fortune either gives you 25 or drains 25% sanity. Tower card does a, uh, an event, or not an event, does an interaction. D uh, Devil card does a ghost event. Death card triggers a hunt. Hermit locks the ghost in the ghost room. Moon uh, sets your sanity to zero. Sun sets your sanity to 100. High Priestess gives you a revive or revives a player. The Hanged Man kills you. Um, Monkey Paw, I'm not going to go over all the wishes again. I literally just did. There's a ton of wishes. All of have different ex uh, effects, blah, 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 blah. Um, music Box uh, will make the ghost start singing. 
Uh, so you can find the ghost, you can walk towards the ghost, which will trigger a ghost event. The ghost will walk towards the music box. When it touches the music box, it'll wait a little bit, then trigger a hunt. Uh, and that's it. That's all. That's like the five minute version of this without all the nuance, just if you wanted to get a really, really quick rundown of all of them. Anyway. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was very long, but I hope you learned something. Let me know if you did. Let me know if there's anything somehow that I missed throughout all of this. And I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you did, because I that was a lot of fun for me personally. I like talking about this game. I like talking about all the details that are in it. And once again, if you're not subscribed, please do so. If you like the video, like it. If you just like it, just like it. And if you want to join the lovely games here in chat, you can join us over at twitch.tv slash insim or click the link in the description down below. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.